did you know that Apple have hidden away some really powerful audio unit plugins in GarageBand for iOS? I've talked about two of these secret stock plugins in other videos. You'll find links to them down below the like button. In this video, I'm going to share the best of the rest. To use these audio unit plugins, you'll first need to head to your iPad or iPhone's settings, then tap on GarageBand, then toggle on the Enable iOS Effect Plugins switch. To find them in GarageBand, open Track Settings, tap Plugins and EQ, tap Edit, then tap a green cross icon in an empty plugin slot. From here, tap on Audio Unit Extensions. Here you can access any third-party AU plugins you have installed on your device. But if you scroll to the very bottom of the list, you'll find Apple's selection of audio unit effects. The audio unit distortion plugin isn't intended as a replacement for something like the distortion pedals found in GarageBand's guitar tracks. This is a highly tweakable effect capable of adding some subtle grit to a track. Or causing complete sonic destruction. AU Distortion comes with 22 presets to get you started that range from instrument specific patches. to multi-use delay-fueled sounds. There are five different tabs to dive into here. Delay, Ring Modulation, Decimation Overdrive and Global. This is a truly versatile effect that for my money is probably best used on drum and rhythm tracks, as I find it's maybe a touch too harsh for things like vocals, keys or acoustic instruments. The AU Dynamic Processor is essentially a compressor and gate in one, and gives you far more control than GarageBand's other stock compressor. Again, there are some presets built in if you'd rather just set and forget, from fast and smooth, to hard gate. On the right of the plugin, you'll find an output level meter, plus attack, release, and master gain controls. The attack and release control how quickly the compressor will kick in and how quickly it, well, releases. The master gain is useful to make up any overall volume lost during compression. There are four different points in this graph that you can control. The green and orange points control the expansion threshold and ratio. Any signal below the threshold is expanded downwards by the specified ratio. This works essentially as a noise gate. You set the level at which you want the signal to drop off with the orange expansion threshold point, 
and how quickly it drops off with the green expansion ratio point. The blue point here is the compression threshold. Anything that's louder than this point will be compressed. And the yellow headroom point gradually increases or decreases how much of your audio is compressed after it passes the threshold. Super powerful and, as I said, far more useful in a lot of situations than GarageBand's stock compressor. AU Delay is a really useful delay effect that stands out from some of the other Apple audio units by being really easy to use and really useful in a lot of different situations. By tapping and dragging the point in the first delay line here, you can increase or decrease the delay time by dragging it left or right. and increase or decrease the length of the delay feedback by dragging it up and down. You can zoom in and out of the display by tapping the plus and minus up the top here and switch between mono and stereo delay effects with these two buttons. Below that you have a dry, wet mix control. And a low pass cutoff too. You can achieve really subtle effects with this, for example I can create the illusion of a second guitar track by bringing the delay time right down, turning the wet mix right up and then panning it opposite of the original. Also the fact that you can get up to 2 seconds of delay is just really cool to play with. There are also loads of free instrument plugins that you can use with GarageBand out there, but probably none as good as this one. <laughs> 